2008, just to put into into perspective, we had 1 million temporary visa holders in Australia. Currently, we have 2.4 million. So that is a huge increase. And obviously, look, it it certainly increased a lot under the former government. It went from 1 million in 2008 when Labor were in to uh, 1.9 million at the end of the coalition's term or before, just before the pandemic. And it's currently at 2.4 million. So it's gone up half a million since 20, um, you know, under uh, our stock of temporary migration is half a million higher now with Labor than it was in 2019 under the coalition before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, it crashed, obviously. It turned, you know, it fell quite sharply, but it's rebounded massively in the last few years under Labor. And we've, we've never had this much temporary migration in Australia. And the politicians seem to all believe, including state governments, that all of these people should live in the three eastern capitals. And this seems to be particularly the views of the New South Wales and Victorian governments. And I think you've been quite scathing, have you not, about a plan by the Victorian government in relation to high rise in Melbourne? Yeah, that's right. Look, it, it's, it, it is kind of crazy when you think about it that uh, the two states that bear the most burden from immigration, which is New South Wales and Victoria, their governments are somehow supportive of this because, as I've said repeatedly, uh, the, the federal government gets most of the gains from immigration. So, you know, they, they collect 80% of the tax revenue. The states and local governments collect about 20%. And as a result, the federal government loves big, big Australia immigration because it gets more company taxes, personal taxes, et cetera. But the cost of that immigration then falls on the states. And yet we have, you know, we, we have Victoria and New South Wales drowning in debt, you know, always frantically trying to build more infrastructure, selling off all their assets. I mean, privatisations have been massive in the last 20 years, selling off their assets to then try and fund new infrastructure to try and build out for the new migra- uh, for the new migrants, et cetera. Um, both states are drowning in debt, and yet both their governments seem to be supportive of this, this huge immigration, which just to me does not make any sense. They should be pushing back hard. And the latest uh, salvo in this is both governments are now pushing for high-rise shoeboxes to accommodate all these migrants. So, you know, Victoria's just, land, uh, just, just launched their 50 activity centre scheme, which basically wants to uh, set, set 20 sort of inner and middle ring suburbs of Melbourne to be um, plastered in high-rise apartments of 20 storeys, you know, up to 20 storeys. New South Wales has done exactly the same thing. The And the New South Wales Productivity Commission said that, you know, building rules should be deregulated and, you know, we should get rid of height limits, uh, apartment size limits, uh, you know, requirements to have parking, storage, natural light, all these sorts of things. And this is all a bid to try and basically um, increase the number of apartments being built in both cities to accommodate this mass immigration when I would argue that instead of doing this, we should just cut the immigration because... Mm -hmm. We don't want this future. We, we, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know anybody who thinks it's a good idea for Sydney and Melbourne to double in size or roughly double in size over the next 40 to 50 years from where they are now uh, and for future residents to have to live in high-rises which are often very poorly built, as we've seen, uh, you know, with, 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 with all the apartments that have been built over the last 10 years. Yes. And surrounded by limited infrastructure in terms of roads, for example, in terms of uh, water and uh, in terms of uh, schools and hospitals. All of these will have to grow, and they yeah. can't grow. And, and there just isn't enough labour to provide all this stuff. So the, the, the latest stoush that's broken out in New South Wales, David, is um, this. Uh, se- several groups have argued. So we've had basically the Productivity Commission, um, Treasurer uh, Daniel Mookie and Mervac have all argued that the state's spending too much money on infrastructure and that's diverting resources and labour away from building homes. But then, you had the committee, but then you had the committee for Sydney last week then argue that, no, 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 we need more infrastructure investment because if you don't have the infrastructure investment, you can't build the homes. And they, and they uh, the committee for Sydney argued that Sydney needs, um, it was some astronaut, dozens and dozens more uh, train and, and uh, tram lines along Sydney, which is going to cost, you know, how many hundreds of billions of dollars to do this stuff? Well, and, 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 and this just shows you you can't have both. You can't have high population growth, high infrastructure and high housing. It doesn't work. 